Okay, well, we're going to get going here. I'm going to go ahead and record this just in case the other folks aren't don't make it or whatever. Um, so what I want to show you guys today, a uh, project that I've been needing to do for a while, and honestly, it's something that, that you guys are going to have to deal with whenever you get to your project anyway, so that way you know how to do this. Okay, so yeah, as Gabe pointed out, we're in my bathroom. Um Right here is my receptacle for that. It's got this little test and, and reset and that, all that kind of business. What what do you what is that thing? Why does it have that test and reset and all that business on there? What kind of outlet is that? That's a GFCI. Very good, Taylor. Yes, it is a GFCI. Can somebody else tell me what a GFCI does? Somebody's keying in here. Somebody's keying in. Yep, Cody got GFCI. Yep. What the heck's a GFCI? What does that mean? Uh oh, we're not brave anymore. Maybe this will get. Remember, GFCI stands for ground fault. Circuit interrupter. Yep, Cody just fixed me up with that. GFCI, ground fault circuit interrupter. So what's it do? What does this thing do? You know, I'm right here next to the sink. If I splash water up on this thing, what would happen? It'll shut off. It shuts off, hopefully. I mean, that's the safety that yeah. we're looking for, right? That's why we have it here next to the sink, because if we're within six feet, electrical code tells us that we need to have a ground fault circuit interrupter, so that way it will shut off, and it'll shut off immediately. We don't want it to travel back to the breaker box because we're, yeah, we're talking milliseconds, but still milliseconds can mean a lot whenever we're talking about our life, right? Problem I've got is, you know, we're living in a technological world and, um, yeah, yeah, Sam, Sam was saying it's kind of like a fuse. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's a lot like that, only we can reset it. Yeah, good, good analogy for that, Sam. I like that. But, um, what we, what, you know, this technological world that we're living in, I need more stuff plugged in here. So like I've got my beard trimmer plugged up here. I've got my electric toothbrush plugged up here. I've got like this candle thing that I need plugged up in here sometimes. Well, I've only got two outlets, okay? What if I need to charge my cell phone while I'm like getting ready because I didn't get it plugged in the night before? I need a second outlet on here, okay? So we're gonna add an outlet to this. So the very first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna test out them. So I've got this little tester right here and you can pick one of these up at your local hardware store. This one's really nice because you just turn it on I got a green light for, hey, we're good, we're good to go, and then guess what? Oh, so this still has power on it, so it turns red. So no, I don't want to do that. So I need to go turn that off at the breaker, okay? So I'm going to go flip that off real quick. And yes, the breaker's really, really close here. So we're going to go back, we're going to test one more time just to be sure. Hey, green means go, right? So we are okay with that. That that tells us that this thing is dead now and that we know that for sure. Always do that before. Don't just assume. Um, my breaker box is labeled pretty well, but not all of them are, right? Um, even as well as mine is, sometimes there's something that's a little iffy. Uh, the other day, I, would, I wasn't exactly sure where the dishwasher was, okay? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to replace this box that's existing here. So I'm going to pull this out just a little bit. Okay. We've got all the wiring going on in here. Okay. So we've got a line in and we've got a line out to the towards my load. A GFCI has to have it like that. So our line in is always going to be coming from the breaker box. The line out is going to be going to any kind of load that we may have hooked up to that. Okay. So, to replace this box, I'm going to need to unhook all of this stuff here, okay? So, I've got myself a little screwdriver here. I'm going to go ahead and unhook those real fast. You guys have probably gotten used to that in your training boards, right? Okay. 
Man, look at this. This ground was completely wrapped around there. That looked like, that looked, where's Cheaty yet? That looks like, like, like what Cheaty does. Wrapped all the way around it. Now this particular, uh, this particular GFCI actually allows me to be able to, um, just insert them. So that's kind of nice. That makes things go a little bit quicker. Just for management of this, because I'm going to have this all off, I've got some tape here handy. And I'm going to actually put some blue tape on the ones that are coming from the breaker box, just so that I know, hey, here's the breaker box lead. So I don't want to get those mixed up. Because your GFCI will not work if you have it hooked up the opposite way. Okay, fun fact. So whenever you guys go to do this on your project, it's got to go the right way or it doesn't work. Okay? All right. So I'm going to disconnect both sides of this coming from the breaker box. That's nice and quick. Now I'm going to, so what I've got is there is a, um, there's a receptacle on my wife's station over here behind me. And um, so the lead goes out to it. So that way she's protected by this GFCI as well. Okay. All right. So now I've got all this loose, okay? Now, hey, keep in mind, if you're not secure about this, you don't know what you're doing, call in a professional, okay? Have an electrician take a look at this, as always. All right, so my next move that I'm going to do, I've got to replace this box. So I need a two-gang box. So what that means is a box that has um, two slots for devices, right? So this is a two gang. This is what they called an old work box. Okay, it doesn't mean because it's old. It means that this is already installed. Okay, if we had bare studs here and um, instead of just drywall, then we could just go ahead and install one that we nail on, just like what you guys have been working with on your uh, training boards. Well, this one has these little flaps. As I tighten these up, those can go up against the drywall. So that's kind of nice. That way it just tightens up against it. I'll be honest with you, you're gonna see this. That is pretty much all my entire house is done. I need, I'd really like to sit down with the electricians from my house and let's just have a sit down and a talk because guess what? I'm not really sure your, um, I'm not really sure your, how well your rubric's gonna look for all this. So this may be interesting getting, getting this box out because this is also an old work box. Not too bad, actually. Not too bad. Okay? So I'm going to take those. I'm going to separate those a bit. Because they're going out through their individual holes. Alright. I'm actually going to... I've got a wire nut on this ground. that uh, has kind of a jumper lead going through it. So that's kind of that's kind of handy sometimes to be able to uh, get up to your ground screw without having to uh, disrupt everything else. So that's not going to fit through my... That's not going to fit through my uh, hole in the back of it. So I'm just taking that off. This is a special wire nut that you can actually feed a wire through it. Not really the types that you guys have, but so I'm just going to straighten that out just so I can get through here. Boop. Got that off of there. All right, great. So now I'm just pulling that straight off there. So we can see that's the exact same kind of box. It's got some little metal inserts. Cool. I can save that. I can use that for probably a later job that I may do. Who knows? You'll find whenever you become homeowners that uh, you always have these piles of, of junk stuff that, hey, I may use that someday. Okay? I'm going to go ahead and punch my... Uh, I'm going to go ahead and punch those holes out. So that way I can get into this, uh, this box. And I'm doing those on each side here. Just to make things easier. All right. 
And they're actually down, they're both going down below here because all this wire comes up from the floor. So that's how I'm gonna arrange that. I've got these on the bottom. Okay, I'm gonna flip this over. And that way they can come up through here. So I'm gonna take a look here. So this is my lead that is going to come and it's going over to my load. Remember, this is the one that's coming in from the breaker box. So I'm gonna keep those separate because I want one side going over to my GFCI that I'm gonna put on the left side. And then I'm gonna put another receptacle on the right side here, okay? So I'm just gonna feed that through. Remember, Romex, we want to have all of that yellow sheathing inside of the box, okay? If we don't, we're not meeting code. And code's kind of important because, well, you know, we got inspectors that come in and check that stuff out. And they kind of keep you from moving in or doing any of the stuff in your in your house if you if you don't meet that that code. All right, Carter told me the other day that I make some of these labs look easy, so I'm not making this one look easy right now, okay? This one's for you, Carter. The deal is, is those, uh, where those wires push through, they actually have a little bit of a spring action to stay on them, to keep those wires from pulling out. That way that, that sheathing does not meet that. Okay? All right. So one thing that I need to do, and I probably should have done this before I got all this hooked in together, but that's all right, we can make this work. I need to make this hole bigger in my drywall, right? So I've got this, I'm gonna reorient these. So I'm just gonna take this and we're gonna go about this size right here. Okay, so I'm actually going to use my existing hole, and then I'm just going to cut that out larger, right? So I've got what they call a jab saw, and we're going to get to do this next semester, um, where we have uh, we're going to get to uh, we're going to get to do this uh, next semester whenever we do some drywall, right? It's going to be fun for you guys at home. Whew. Actually, it's better for me. I don't have all the mess then. Speaking of that mess, I've, I've put a piece of masking tape here underneath this with just a grocery bag, you know, a paper grocery bag here underneath it. That really helps to catch all that drywall dust, and that way uh, cleanup is a whole lot simpler. Whenever you guys are out on the job later on, always keep in mind, like, cleanliness is next to godliness. You do not want to be that slap, sloppy technician or that sloppy construction worker. Hang on. That has stuff just everywhere, right? Who the heck wants to hire somebody that leaves all their crap everywhere? I don't want that. I think that says a lot about their work if they have just stuff everywhere. So always remember that. You're bound to get hired back, and trust me, repeat business is where it's at. You're bound to get hired back if you have a nice clean and you do a good job for people. That's the Dallas Terry tip of the day, all right? If you don't get anything else, remember that. All right. So I've got that cut out. Let's uh, let's let's check for size, okay? Because I may need to go a little bit more. I'm not sure. Yeah, it looks like I do. It's close. It's real close. So and that's the deal. Is I don't want this. I don't want this super big because I don't want. I don't want to have. I don't want to have too much exposed, right? I don't want to. You know, this uh, this faceplate can only cover up so many. Uh, such mistakes, right? Hmm, it's gonna look a little rough. Uh, one tip, and I didn't bring it in here. If you score that paper with a razor knife first, that'll clean that up a whole lot, and you don't have to worry about that. Ooh, we're super close. We're super close. All right, 
I'm making sure that my wires are through here. That way I can pull them and get them in here. Because I still want to be able to work with those. But I want to be able to put my box in place here. So I'm just folding in those little ears. Ooh. Folding in those little ears. Ooh. Still got a little bit on the corners I need to work on. There we go. So now that's back and in place. Okay. So now what we do is I just take a screwdriver and I snug those up. And what's going to happen is that flap, it's going to turn out and it's going to tighten up as we tighten the screw. So this actually turned up. I think that's something that you, your kids said these days, right? You turn up. Or does that mean something different? Probably means something different. I always get these, these sayings wrong. So this one's turning down. Okay. Valentine's Day is coming up, so hopefully you're not getting turned down. I don't know. There we go. Boom. So now that box is in there. It's secure. It's ready to go. All right. Checking out the chat, making sure we're good there. That's looking all right. Everybody's hanging with me. We still got plenty of time to get stuff wired up. I decided to cut myself. That kind of kind of tends to happen. I'm not really sure when or how I did that. Just looked down and saw the blood. Okay. So boom. Now I've got these two. I'm gonna go back to my original GC, GCFI. Okay. Or I'm sorry, GFCI. Um, it'll still work. There's nothing wrong with it. Okay. Remember, I've got the load and the line side, right? So my load is what's going out to the next plug. The line is the one from the breaker, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and hook it up. Ooh, we got somebody coming in. Who is that? Who is it? Cheaty! Wait a minute, I thought Cheaty was already in here. Dang, he must have dropped out. Okay, so you remember how that, that uh, wire nut was on here? I guess we're gonna go ahead and do that again. Okay, it's fed through here. Now, here's gonna be the trick though. I gotta do three of those. Cause I've got an extra wire that I'm gonna have to put in here for the next uh, for the next plug. It's a wire that nicked me. You know what? We're right here in the bathroom. I'm gonna go ahead and put on a band-aid so we don't have to deal with that. Seeing that, all right? Okay. So yeah, I need to make sure that that extra wire is uh, is connected for the ground to, to make sure that both plugs are are equally grounded. Because you know, if if we don't have a GFCI grounded properly, I mean, we're kind of going at this for nothing, then, right? That's the whole point is to have good grounding. That's the G in GFCI. So here's what I'm going to do. I already prepared some extra jumper wires. That's going to be what's going to hook up our second plug 
to this GFCI. So I'm just going to go ahead and take the the uh, that jumper that I've got for the ground. Let's see if I can get this in just a little bit further. It'd be nice to have a little bit more play with this. Might not have that though. Okay. So I keep on telling you guys, if you're working on a real job, this is a real job. This is literally my house. It uh, you get inside this box, it becomes snug. It becomes very snug. All right, so I'm going to put both these lines in here. It's got the third line coming all the way through, and then I'm going to tighten this down. I'm going to try to bend this out so I don't cut myself again. Hey, there we go. That's looking great. Okay, so now here's what I've got. This one's for my next plug. This one's gonna be the one going on the GFCI. So I'm just gonna be hook all three of these up there. All right, so I've got a black wire here. Which one does it hook up to? Which screw? It's okay, folks. I'm a teacher. I got I got wait time for days. What was the question? I got a black wire here. Which side should, Which side do I need to hook that up to? I've got a gold screw and a silver screw. The gold screw. The gold screw because that's the hot side, right? Right. Yes. So I'm gonna hook that up there. I'm going down here to the line. That's gonna go insert. Maybe. There we go. And then I'm just going to snug that up. Okay. Where's the white one go? On the silver screw. On the silver screw. So the opposite side. Okay. I had somebody, I can't remember who it was, but whenever I was testing their project the other day, they had a hot and return reverse. Remember I had that tester and it'll actually show, uh, it'll be pop up a red on it if you've got those reversed. Things will still function, possibly. It's not exactly how, uh, not exactly how it was intended, okay? All right, so my ground, whoo, just popped that guy out. So that wasn't on there very good. Push that in really far. Really snug that up this time. Okay, so my ground is still a screw. I don't have any insert spot to just put that, right? So I've got to twist that around, okay? So Carter, this is your favorite part, all right? I got my end of my screw, uh, my, my needle pliers, tip of the wire, and just turning a doorknob. Doop. There we go. I've got a nice little hook. That makes the perfect hook to be able to hook around that. I always want this to go around counter, or I'm sorry, clockwise around my screw because I turn a screw clockwise to tighten it up. I'm gonna tilt that down just a little bit just so it'll help me hook that on there, okay? Because it is kinda in a tight place. Maybe I'll loosen up that screw a bit more too. No, it's not gonna give anymore. So this is what I got to deal with. This is the cards I'm dealt. All right, cool. Popped right in there. Now I'm just going to snug that up. Now see what happens is, as I snug this up, it's going to pull that in going clockwise around it. If I put it the other way, it'd push it out. I push it out. All right, cool. So I'm going to twist this around just because I want it oriented this way. I'll be honest, it's my own personal preference. I don't know that there's a right or a wrong way with that, but you know, that that's always a it's always a piece of controversy sometimes about that. Okay, so my load has the same type of screws, right? I've got a hot side, which side is that supposed to go on again? The gold, 
The gold. Okay, good, good. Taylor, I'm glad you're here, buddy. I am glad you are here and vocal. It could be awkward otherwise. So the problem I'm having, this is a little bit longer than my liking because if I put this in, look, there's a little bit of that copper still sticking out. All right, I don't like that. I don't want any copper sticking out of this thing. So I'm gonna trim it just a bit. I mean, we're talking eighth of an inch. We're not talking much. I'm probably getting nitpicky here, but you know, as I said, this is my house. I'm gonna be nitpicky especially whenever it comes to electrical, okay? So I've got that thing down. Yeah, I don't have much sticking out now. The thing is, is whenever I shove this all back in the box, I don't want that hot wire touching any grounds or any returns, anything like that. Because guess what? Then we're arc welding, okay? I like for the fires in my house to stick to, uh, to be in, inside the uh, fireplace, okay? I don't need to have them inside the uh, bathroom, inside the electrical box. All right, so I'm gonna go for the second one over here on the silver side, this white this uh, white wire. I'm gonna give him a haircut too. He's a little bit, got a little, got a little happy with that, I guess, right? Real short, real short. Hey, now we got that going on. Cool, all right, so I got a hot, I got a return, okay? I've got a hot and a return that are going over to the next plug, right? So there's a second plug that's wired up on this within our bathroom. Um, I'm gonna put this guy on here. Now this thing looks a little bit fancy, right? I'll be honest, I bought this on Fluke. I really, I thought it was a GFCI whenever I was at the uh, store getting it. Um, and it turns out it's not. It's a regular receptacle, but it's got a couple of these USB ports on here. So, you know, that's kind of nice for the cell phone. You don't have to have that block or whatever. So all you do with it, it still has a hot and it still has a white on here and it still has a ground. So I'm still just going to hook up to all those same things um, to do that, right? All right. So hots, that's the black wires, right? So I need to put both of those in here at the same time because it is on the same screw that tightens this up. Yeah, again, I don't like how much that's sticking out. So I'm going to trim it, give it a little bit of a haircut, kind of like what we're going to, you know. Wait a minute. Taylor, you said you got a haircut, didn't you? I did. Oh, my gosh. No more man bun? No, I had to get rid of it. Oh, my goodness. Too much. Was, was it because, like, you were going to be forced to move out if you uh, kept the man bun? Or was there a girlfriend, like, threatening, like, no Valentine's Day? <laughs> it, it, it really just got too much to manage. Oh, so too much maintenance. It, so, huh. I decided I'd get it cut. Okay. I don't know. I've never had a man bun. I'll be honest. I would not I would not need any kind of a tie if I were to do a man bun. It would just be like a fuzzball sitting on top of my head. All right. Cool. So, I'm going to do the returns now, right? They go on the silver side. I'm putting both of them in there just the same. I gave that one a little bit of a haircut again. Didn't like how long it was sticking out there. So I'm just going to come in here and I'm just going to snug that guy up. Boop. Okay. All right. So the last thing I got is this last ground. Remember we split this guy off and he just goes here on the bottom. It's a green screw, you know, green for ground. All right. Uh, remember, tip of this doorknob. I'm gonna tilt that down just to like make that a little bit easier to attach. Not, don't go crazy with it, or it doesn't attach very well. Okay. I heard the same ding. Nope, no ding. Hey, there we go. Looped around there, popped in. Sorry, Carter, that one, honestly, that was luck. All right, snug that up. Okay, like I told you guys with your labs, if your device has any more screws left on it that don't have anything on it, 
then that's a problem, right? If you've got loose wires in your box that don't have a place to go, that's a problem. Right now, it looks like I don't have that situation. I have, this box has everything attached. I've got hot wires, return wires, and a ground. Hot wire, hot wire, return wire, return wire, ground. All the grounds are hooked together. I think I'm ready to close this up. If we were surgeons, we'd be like, all right, nurse, we're ready to close. Okay? So here's the trick to this. We got all this wire, right? All this wire, and it has to fold back into this box. So I want to make sure that I'm kind of folding this stuff neatly. I don't want this to just be spaghetti going in here, all right? Because all this has to fit in here nicely, and I don't want stuff like, I don't want that ground wire to come up here to where my hot wire is. Because guess what? Then we're arc welding. We don't need that. All right. Boom. Here we go. Ooh, wait a sec. I'm going to look and see how my plate attaches real quick because sometimes you got to have these screws to attach the plate. So let's uh, let's take a sneaky peek. How are we doing on time? Oh, we're doing great on time. Doing great. So got this nice looking cover to go over everything. It looks like it kind of just snaps on. Let's see here. Grab a screwdriver and pop this guy across apart. Oh, okay. All right, so there's a little hole up on top of each one. So still, these attach into your box. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and attach those and get those snug down. That way they're in place. We're going to do this one first. Cody, I know you're good at this, man. I get those training boards from you. You got all these in there, and they are snugged up good and tight. If it was German, we'd call it good and tight. Okay? Because I always want to peek at everything. Because you guys are just learning this stuff, right? I want to see what you're doing. All right? I want to make sure you know what you're doing. <laughs> all right, here we go. I suppose if you had a drill or something, you could run this in. I would be afraid to do that, honestly, because this is a plastic box, all right? Those threads will tear out of that thing quicker than, quicker than a student at Carbondale Community High School can say, hey, remote learning's for me. Oh, wait a minute. No, no, no. There we go. That's going in there pretty good, all right? How's it going today in classes? Is it like, from a remote student standpoint, has this been any different today than what it is on a normal basis for you? Probably not, right? I mean, still got the jammies, you know, still got the dog there to pet. There just happens to be ice outside today. Got a bunch of the strong silent type in class today, I guess. Whoa, Cody, Cody, Cody. Keep it clean, buddy. Keep it clean. Alright, this is a... This is a PG-13 YouTube feed. Alright? PG-13, please. Besides, I'm too young and innocent to hear things like that. My goodness. All right, just snugging these things up. Looking good. Does that look all right? I'm glad I got the right color. Nothing's worse than like you get one that's almond and one that's white. This one got a little bit of age on it, so I probably I might need to clean it. All the power's off. It's kind of a good time for that, right? Cool. So let's see how this guy goes. Ooh. All right, so see what I got here? So this actually needs to be shifted in just a little bit because of the spacing here, okay? So 
let's take a look. Let's let's loosen those up a little bit. And you can kind of see this guy here is shifted over to the left about as far as what it'll go. I'm not going too crazy with it. Remember, power's still off, so I can just pinch a screwdriver in here and shove that guy over some. Hey, that's a lot better. That's a whole lot better, all right? So I'm gonna pinch that guy back over where, where it fit up good, and then I'm gonna snub that down, okay? I guess I gotta be, I gotta watch out. You know, I'm in a bathroom and I'm talking about pinching. Whew. Cody, don't do that in here, all right? Smell up the place while I'm trying to, okay? Give that just a little bit of a tweak. Not that kind of tweak. All right, so these just, uh, these just snug in just a little bit. Oh, they're Phillips. Let me switch to Phillips. Oh, that first one kind of felt weird. Okay. All right. Now, this guy just snaps on here like so. Ta-da! All right, let's see if I got a tester here. I should have a tester. There's a multimeter. Hey, there it is. All right, I'm gonna turn the power back on. We're gonna see if we did this right. Good news, the breaker didn't kick back off on me. Hey, we got two orange lights, woo! That's what we do whenever we test the, the projects, right? All right, how about our new one? Woo! Yeah, that's what we're looking for. So now I can be able to uh, have, you know, multiple things plugged in here. I can definitely have that little candle thing, you know, because sometimes there's some business that goes on here in the bathroom that's not too pleasant, horrific. So that'll help out with that. All right. So what do you guys think? Can you do that? Because let me tell you, that's one of the things that you're probably going to have to do on the, on the, uh, on the project, right? They're not side by side. It's not in a uh, two gang box, but there is a place where you do have to have uh, an external, uh, an outlet running off of the G GFC or GFCI just like this, okay? So glad you learned that, okay? Questions, comments, concerns?